we are on number six, which I will do in this color. Number six. Number six. If y is the midpoint of x, z, which of the following must be true? So if I had a line x, z, y is the midpoint of this, right? So this length is equal to this length, right? Because equal distance between the two. So the choices they give us, choice one, they say y, z is equal to 1 half x, z. Let's see, y, z is this length. y, z is this length. And x, z is this whole length. And yeah, sure, y, z is going to be half of the whole length, right? Because it's the midpoint, right? Because this is the same distance as this distance. So this distance will be half of the whole. So this is right. 2. 1 half x, z is equal to 2xy. So now they're saying 1 half of this entire distance is 1 half of this entire distance is equal to xy. It's not equal to 2xy, right? This is wrong. This would have been right if there wasn't a 2 here. If, if we got rid of this, then it's right. Then it's something similar to this. Then it would be saying that this is half of the whole thing. But when you put that 2 here, it makes it wrong, right? xz is actually equal to 2xy, so that's not right. So this is not right. And choice 3 says 2xy is equal to xz. And this looks right, because it's saying this distance times 2. So the times 2 will give us the whole distance, and the whole distance is xz. The whole distance is xz, so this is right. So choices 1 and 3 are correct, and that is choice E. Next problem, number 7. Seven. If two r is equal to five s, and five s is equal to six t, what does r equal in terms of t? And these are easy because you don't really have to solve for anything. They kind of just you know two r is equal to five s, five s is equal to six t, so two r is equal to six t, right? So two r is equal to 6t. 2r is equal to something that's equal to 6t. So 2r is equal to 6t. And they want an r in terms of t. So r is equal to, divide both sides by 2, r is equal to 3t, which is choice c. Problem 8. A total of k passengers went on a bus trip. k passengers went on a bus trip. Each of the n buses that were used to transport the passengers could see the maximum of x passengers. So n buses x capacity. capacity. If one bus had three empty seats, so one had one, three empty seats, and the remaining buses were filled, which of the following represents the relationship among n, x, and k. Well, let's think about what happens. What's, essentially, we used all of our capacity except for uh, three, three uh, seats, right? So we could say, and I don't know how they want to write it, but I'll just say what I'll write it. So the total passengers, the total passengers traveled, right? That's what they said is k, is going to be equal to our total capacity. Our total capacity is n buses times x people per bus. But then we know that there are three empty seats. This, this, we would be done if there were no empty seats, right? Then we would have said, well, we had n buses. Each of them can hold, held its entire capacity. So we, we took n times x people, right? But we know that there are three empty seats out of all the buses. There's one bus with three empty seats. So we know that there's three less people than kind of the full capacity. So that's our answer. k equals nx minus 3. And that is choice A. Wasn't too bad, huh? Problem number nine. Looks like Sal's going to have to do some drawing. Nine. I haven't used red in a long time, probably because it's tacky. But I'll use red. I have this line here. I have.
have another line, and at least from the drawing looks parallel. I don't know if it is. I know we can assume. And we have this line looks like it goes in like that. Almost done. And then I have a line that looks something like this. And then the labels are this is this is eighty degrees. And they tell us that this right here is fifty degrees. Fifty degrees. And they also tell and this is X. This is X degrees. That's all they tell us. And this is line L, this is line M, this is line K. They say in the figure above line L is parallel to line M. Well, okay, so we know even and they look parallel too. What is the value of X? So here we just, you know, this is the angle game if you've read if you've seen the geometry videos that I've done. So, well first of all, we can just, you know, figure out corresponding angles or um, you know, we'll do our our best to figure out corresponding angles. So let me ask you a question. If if this angle is 80 degrees, what is and when I do these problems, I literally just try to figure out all the angles in a direction that will eventually get me to x. So what angles can I figure out? Well, if this is 80, what angle is this? Well, these two angles are are uh, supplementary, right? So they add up to 180. So this is 80. This is going to be 100 degrees, right? Now, if this angle right here is 100 degrees, well, then what is well, let's just keep doing this. What is this angle? Well, they're alternate interior angles, right? And if you remember from your, you know, parallel lines in geometry class, or if you remember from the videos on on alternate interior angles or on the angle game I've done, we know that this angle is equal to this angle. So this angle is also 100 degrees, right? And we know that because this line right here is a transversal. And these two lines are parallel. That's how we can make that assumption. Now, if this is 100, this angle is 50, what's going to be this angle right here? Well, once again, we know that these three angles together form 180, right? They're kind of, all three combined are supplementary. So if 100, 150, so these are 150, so this one has to be 30 degrees, because it all adds up to 180. I think we're almost there. If that is, If this angle is 30 degrees, what is x? What is this angle? Well, this angle and x are also supplementary, right? So they have to add up to 180 degrees. So if this is 30, then x is 150, right? They're, these are supplementary along this line, right? And so x is 150 degrees, and that is choice A. Next problem. Problem 10. They tell us 3x squared is less than 3x, and the whole thing, squared. For what value of x is the above statement false? OK, so they give us, see, the first list of the choices are a is minus 3, b is 0, c is 1 third, d is 1, and then E is none of the above, essentially. OK, so let's see. Is it false for this one? Minus 3 squared, so it's 3, 3 times 9 is less than, what's 3 times minus 3? Minus 9. Minus 9 squared is less than 81. So 27 is less than 81. That's true. For 0, 3 times 0 squared is 0 is less than 0 squared, which is 0. Well, that's not true. 0 is less than 0? Not true. So this is our choice, choice B. Oh, I only have 30 seconds left, so I'll do number 11 in the next video. I'll see you soon.